What's going on, 27 Squad? We have day four of the OTAs, and we'll get into that in just a second. But quickly, I do want to give a huge, huge shout out. I want to get a little sentimental for a second. A little, a little sentimental for a second. We're going to get uh, give a huge shout out to the past 400 subscribers that, that subscribed to the channel in the past 28 days, according to my YouTube analytics. Those aren't always trustworthy, but I will trust it in this case. Uh, it, it's hard to believe. I mean, last month we hit 2,000 subscribers when I did that, uh, that crazy freaking wing challenge, but uh, we're at 2.3K right now, so appreciate you guys. Make sure if you guys are watching this channel for the first time or if you're recurring uh, viewers and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button for more Giants content as well as NFL content, guys. Give me some articles. Give me some stuff to talk about. I want to try to make a video every single day for you guys, whether that be Giants football or, or in Giants news and things like that or all NFL news. I don't mind it whatsoever. We can talk Jaguars, ja freaking Chargers. Eagles, Cowboys, whatever. We'll talk anything. Um, so that being said, let's get right on to the video. All right, so first things first, we always do the standouts first, and we'll go over the standouts, then we'll go over some notes. By the way, guys, there's no highlight film to go over, so there's nothing to put in the background, so you'll just be seeing my beautiful face, or I'll put some pictures from today's practice up um, when they're necessary for certain players, things like that, because there's no highlight film. I don't know. It's, it's Right now, it's 3.48 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and no highlight film yet, so I don't know what's going on or whatever. So... Uh, first standout, we're going to be talking about Corey Ballantine. As you guys know, he is our sixth round pick in this year's draft. And he's also coming off of a terrifying injury in which he was shot in the buttocks. Um, and he's coming back. And um, not that he's made any crazy amount of plays. It, it says here, John Schmelk himself said, He may not have made any spectacular plays, but the fact that Ballantine was out there makes him a standout. He had been held out of drills against, a, as a, against an opponent as he recovered from a gunshot wound he suffered the weekend of the draft last week his activity level was increased and his mobility impressed enough to get him on the field during the team portion of practice on tuesday he played outside cornerback with the third team exactly where i thought he would be i think he's going to be more of a special teams type guy myself uh very good on uh kick uh, kick blocks and things like that uh, another guy that we haven't really heard of except till now someone that was in the AAF the only AAF guy we signed on the team and that's Henry Tolliver he played with the Salt Lake, uh, Salt Lake Stallions uh, cornerback for the Salt Lake Stallions uh, it says here during half half line pass drills at the start of practice Tolliver got his head around rose up and knocked away a pass intended for Corey Coleman from Daniel Jones it prevented what otherwise would have been a big play on a good throw from Jones during the final 7-on-7 seven -seven period of practice, Tolliver grabbed an interception on a Jones pass and deflected it off the receiver's hand. So he has one deflection and he has one interception. So great job, great play there from Henry Tolliver. By the way, guys, it was a very rainy day today uh, at Quest Diagnostic. They played outside and it was raining. So I guess that was some good practice for, for, for a couple guys there and a chance for some veteran guys to shake off the rust a little bit um, and playing in the rain. So this was a very, very defense-heavy uh, practice. Uh, because obviously whenever there's a rain situation the offense never plays very well according to John Schmelk in another article I think it was John Schmelk or Solomon one of those guys they said that there were more so a lot of dump offs today on uh, non -spectac spectacular plays uh, the offensive line played uh, quite well but the edge rushers were still dominant uh, the edge rushers in particular were, were very dominant but as far as um, as a whole how practice went the offense really didn't show anything special, but the defense was on top. Uh, we'll talk about Antoine Bethea and, and Triple Peppers in just a second. Um, so those two safeties are trying to are, are finding a very good rhythm in each other. So as we move on to our next standout, we have Sterling Shepard. It says here, on the day with wet conditions and rain throughout most of practice, Sterling Shepard didn't drop a pass. He kind of he had a couple of bobbles, but always came down with the football. Despite precarious footing, he showed the ability to separate and make and make the catch time and time again. He has been the toughest player to cover throughout OTAs, and that is for sure. Sterling Shepard, so far in East Rutherford during during practice, he has been on the standouts. Probably, I think almost every single 
uh, OTA so far, he has been making noise here in the OTAs. He's really showing off that he could be that number one guy. He is the number one guy. So, uh, great job for Sterling Shepard. We then move on to Antoine Bethea. On the first play of the team period portion of practice, Bethea made the most of an, of an opportunity when he came up with an easy interception on an errant Eli Manning throw intended for Sterling Shepard. Bethea is constantly communicating, uh, communicating on the field and is working with Jabril Peppers to make sure the two presumptive starting safeties are on the same page. So he's taking that veteranship role and is, is helping Jabril Peppers create a chemistry and learn how to organize orchestrated defense he's doing a great job there Eli Manning uh, they, they, they said that already in the sideline notes that there were a lot of crazy passes now Pat Shermer did come out with a um, a press conference you guys can watch it if you want I watched it and it really didn't tell anything more than what we see in these articles uh, he kind of just basically adds on to uh, and he has he's not actually very critical and you'll never find a coach really critical of their players during practice they won't tell you how they feel about them uh, they said the quarterbacks played fine they were a little they, they, some of them were a little off because of the wind but listen they, they didn't throw the ball very well. That's just how it is, okay? So um, he's not going to say that. It's not going to come from his mouth. So, so far in the OTAs, it, you really get in the best of all worlds, really. Uh, all type of weather conditions and things like that are happening. And I was thinking that already as soon as they said that there was a, windy, uh, a rainy and windy condition. Uh, because we already had, uh, I think their first OTA was, it was hot outside, it was a normal day, and they just played fine, and then the second day, a very, very gusty winds, and Eli Manning proved to be the one that he was still able to throw in the gusty winds, and then the third OTA, they were inside, so they know how to play inside, you know, controlled environment, and then now, we have... Uh, day four and they're playing in the rain so they're really getting all types of scenarios that they're gonna see um, when they're playing in the regular season so that is a very good step thank you mother mother nature for doing that um, so uh, on top of that Janoris Jenkins did not play today uh, he had to go he had to miss this OTA and go to a graduation I believe it was for a, a family member and you know what I'm not mad at it whatsoever that is not a greedy move that's not what it, you know this is voluntary OTAs it's not mandatory yet and obviously you want to be there for your family so he went ahead and did that i'm sure the giants had no problem with it you as giants fans should not have a problem with it suck it up move on okay it's going to give opportunities for other guys uh like sam beal who was playing the starting quarterback uh, cornerback and then deandre baker was moved up to first team he's getting first team reps uh and it says here the defensive backfield had a monster day. DeAndre Baker replaced Jenkins as a starting quarterback, a, a cornerback across from Sam Beal. First year cornerback Henry Tolliver had a deflection, and we mentioned that already, uh, on a deep pass from Daniel Jones intended for Corey Coleman, and later in intercepted a pass and hit off, that hit off the hands of Darius Slayton. And then it also mentions uh, Antoine Bethea having an interception on Eli Manning uh, and Corey Ballantine, uh, Ballantine getting some reps with the third team unit. So the secondary was excellent, excellent today. Did very well in the rain. Uh, we have another note here uh, from Benny Fowler. And, you know, uh, who wrote this article? John Schmelk also wrote this article. And he has some very, very good words to say here. He says here, Benny Fowler got some work as a third wide receiver with the starters on Tuesday. By the way, I said in my wide receiver previews, I'll put the card up, uh, up above. I said he probably has the best chance to make uh, to make it as a third wide receiver, as a third wide receiver for the Giants, him and Russell Shepard. So uh, that being said there, it says here he provides a contrast to the body type of starters Golden Tate and Sterling Shepard. At 6'1", 212 pounds, he plays much more like a power slash possession receiver who can operate outside and in the slot. He showed off his skills today with a couple of short catches. Um, so here's the thing with Benny Fowler. Is he the guy we need? You know, I've been talking about how we, how I wanted personally, and I, how I think the Giants were trying to find a six three, six four wide receiver somewhere around the two twenty range, um, to be that red zone big time, um, you know, uh, go up and get it type receiver. But what if Benny Fowler is the guy we need? What if the six one, uh, two twelve hybrid, the guy that could be in the slot and the outside, is the guy we need? Maybe it's just somebody that, somebody that is talented enough that is not of the body type that we've been look, that we've been having for such a long time. It started off with Victor Cruz, and then we had uh, then we had this guy, 
uh, Jarrell Jernigan, and then uh, I know I'm going back. I'm throwing it back with names right now. Uh, Victor Cruz, Jarrell Jernigan, Odell Beckham, Sterling Shepard, Corey Coleman, Golden Tate. We have a lot of these slot receiver guys, and I'm sure there are guys I'm not that I haven't mentioned that 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 were part of the team. Um, you know, Preston Parker, and, and a lot a lot of guys like that. Miles White the same body type over and over and over again we need a different body type we need to switch it up on the offense what if Benny Fowler is the guy next up the edge rushers the edge rushers were on fire um so far today we start off with Lorenzo Carter had made a really nice play against the first team offense on an attempted screen pass that's something we really struggled on last year with screen passes so Lorenzo Carter started to defend the screen pass a little better the offense tried to sell a screen pass to the right to Saquon Barkley only to turn to the other side of the field for a screen to tight end Evan Ingram so it was a fake screen uh to another screen pass Carter read it all and knocked it knocked down Eli Manning's pass intended for Ingram so he read the fake screen to the real screen before I mention the next note uh, that that John smoke ha uh, John smoke has keep in mind Nate Solder and Mike Remmers are still out so with that being said during the splits uh, the blitz portion of practice the first team offensive line did an excellent job communicating and maintaining a clean pocket for Eli Manning overall Giants edge rushes are getting into the backfield but there are caveats I really don't know what that means but We'll move on. The first, the first is the uh, the first is the rules surrounding OTAs preventing contact, which makes it impossible to judge line play. I've been saying that for a while. You really can't judge how good an offensive line or edge rushers are doing because of the OTA rules and the CBA and things like that. Uh, Nate Stupar is starting to make a little bit noise, uh, being a great communicator at the inside linebacker position, uh, taking I believe second team reps, and then here. We have what I've been really focusing on so far this um, this OTAs, and that's probably what I'll wrap up with. Um, not too much here in, in day four of the OTAs, but Jabril Peppers is consi consistently lining up with Evan Ingram. I'm loving the rivalry right now. It's a friendly rivalry. You can see a picture of them, you know, bumping, uh, bumping fists and things like that. They're having a great time. The competition is very healthy for their own development, respectively, being with how how much of a hybrid both of these players are. You look at look at Jabril Peppers and Evan Ingram. They might be the most hybrid of their positions in the NFL right now. Evan Ingram, you can't find you can't show me another another hybrid like another versatile um player like Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram really reminds you of like a Jimmy Graham back in his prime. Uh, not he's not not saying he's as great as Jimmy Graham, but you know, you know what I'm getting at. He's not much of a blocker tight end. He's really athletic. He can run the routes. A lot of people are saying he should transition to wide receiver. Same exact thing we saw from Jimmy Graham back then when he was playing with the Saints back in his prime. And then uh, Jabril Peppers. He's those, he's a Swiss Army knife. He even embraces it. He is a Swiss Army knife. You can throw him anywhere. He's throwing in the slot. He's throwing in the box. He's throwing in coverage. He's thrown everywhere on run defense and things like that. He can do it all. Um, so as far as Jabril Peppers and Everett Ingram goes, they are the most versatile of their positions, I'd say, in the NFL. Uh, you could argue Tyron Matthew and a couple other guys for the safety position for Jabril, Jabril Peppers, but he's such a Swiss Army knife. Um, so the competition is still going, and it says here that uh, they're still lining up with each other on man-to-man -man situations. Uh, Peppers played him well on Tuesday, sticking with Ingram on routes down the field. Both Peppers and his fellow safety veteran Antoine Bethea are consistently, are constantly communicating on and off the field. After a series, they came to the sideline discussing their assignments on a previous play to make sure everyone had it right. Peppers also had a nice uh, celebration after the defense forced a throwaway, yelling to equipment staff member Kyle Lynch, who was holding the down indicator. That's fourth down. Thank you. Okay, so he's correcting the, the, the equipment staff as well. He knows what's going on right now. He's he, he knows what's going on. So I, I love it. I love I love so far this, these OTAs. Yes, there are one or two OTAs that are, were kind of silent. You look at day two uh, was the gusty winds. Not The offense wasn't really able to click on anything because of the gusty winds. And Eli played a little better. Um, the first OTAs, the quarterback play was bad. The defense play was great. So I guess I could say that's a great, good OTA. Uh, but today was okay. The defense was still very heavy 
on day four the defense was still very heavy very strong but that i think that was because of the rain situations i want to see what it's like now now that we're four days in i want to see what it's like now on a regular day i want to have no you know uh, um uh terrain advantages whatsoever i don't mind if it's inside i don't mind if it's outside i kind of prefer to be outside uh, just because that's what you're really going to be at uh, i want to have as normal as we can no advantages and just have them playing straight up and see who gets the better of who so that being said Said, guys that is day four of the otas if you want to check out the other otas that i've covered i'll put the playlist i'll create the playlist since i haven't created it yet but i'll put the playlist in the description you guys can watch uh, i have day one and day two uh together because i couldn't cover it on the same day and then i have day three by itself and then today's day four obviously so i'll put the uh, uh playlist in the description make sure you guys check that out make sure you guys subscribe for all giants news and nfl news alike i'm kb and i will see you guys in the next video